Hello YouTube friends and welcome back to another video. My name is Donovan and today I'm going to be showing you the beginner ins and outs of CapCut. So you guys have CapCut all ready to go and downloaded. You got it booted up and this is what you're going to see. You're going to want to go ahead and press the new project button. And once you press that, it's going to open up the software like so. And this is what you guys are going to be looking at. And I want to take this moment to say that the face cam looks like a fishbowl. It's pretty unique, I must say. So go ahead and drop a like just because the fishbowl face cam goes crazy. Let's go ahead and hop right back into the CapCut software though. And basically I want to show you all the fundamental editing tricks that I know how to do with this software. I've been using CapCut for around 10 days and I think it's really important for you guys to learn from a beginner like me because I know the true beginner things that are essential. I've created almost a dozen videos using this software already and it's important to know these certain things that I'm going to show you. So let's go ahead and get started here. You're first going to need some footage to edit. So what you want to do is click import and that'll open up your files. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag a file into this import button. Give me one second. All right, so I just dragged a file into this area right here and as you can see we have a file to work with so what you want to do is just click and hold and drag that into the timeline this is what I always do with my clips I just drag them in right there into the timeline now before we can actually edit anything we need to make sure that your hotkeys are set up properly and what I mean by that is if you go up to the shortcut tab right up here you're going to be able to do a lot of really cool stuff so let's go ahead and click on the shortcut button here and basically I recommend just copying my settings verbatim if you want to really just have a basic setup that has been so useful for me so here are all the timeline settings I have the biggest ones you're gonna need though are in the basic shortcut settings and basically just copy these down these are so essential the ones I use the most out of all of these on this list are control V for paste delete for delete control Z control shift Z and those are the five on the basic panel but then go back to the timeline panel and copy these down right here you're gonna want to use X for split C for select mode control X for split mode and the two other really important keys are if you scroll all the way down here and these last two keys are really important so go ahead and make delete left as the Q key and delete right as the W key alright there's also three other keys that you're gonna want to work with here and those are the zoom in slash zoom out Go ahead and make that control and then the scroll key, which is the middle mouse button. So go ahead and just press control and then scroll up or down with your mouse key to set this as the control and scroll key. And then go ahead and make the up slash down as scroll and then left slash right as scroll as well. And then go ahead and save your settings and then go back to the main screen. And once you're here, I'm gonna show you some really fundamental things to make your editing life so much easier. So for example, as you can see, I want this clip to take up the whole space here on the screen. So that means I'm gonna have to zoom in. So in order to zoom in, just hold down your control key and then scroll up with your middle mouse button and you'll see that you start to zoom in on the screen very useful stuff because it allows you to get really close into the actual software for the clip itself so you can really get those minute details in your editing process so once you've zoomed in to your liking I want to show you guys a really cool feature so let go of the control key and then now just go ahead and scroll left and right with your mouse wheel and as you can see you're gonna be able to scroll left and right or go left and right on your time Timeline. And this is really important because it allows you to be able to navigate the timeline with ease and you don't have to press any buttons, you literally just scroll with your mouse and it's so easy. And that's why setting up the shortcuts are really important because if you don't do that, it's gonna really hinder you from being able to have this easy access with the software. So starting out, I really struggled to find the best hotkeys and these are the best ones that have worked for me. Now for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and mute this clip because I don't need myself talking over myself in this video. So I hope you can appreciate that, but we're gonna go ahead and pretend I want to do some cuts here in this video. So as you can see, I'm talking and let's go ahead and pause right here. And let's say I wanna make a cut. So go ahead and press the X key to make a cut like so, and it splits the clip into two different parts. You have this part right here, and then you have this part right here. And this is really important because as you uh, split this, you know, you're gonna make a second split at some point. So let's go ahead and play the video and say I wanna stop it right here. So basically there's multiple ways to go about cutting this and getting rid of that little clip that we don't want. So you could press X again, and then you could click on this and then you could press delete 
and that's three different steps and that takes too long. So go ahead and press control Z to do the undo option and go ahead and do control Z one more time just to get some practice in. And once you do that, you're gonna have that first cut originally there, but that second cut has not been made yet. So wherever you wanna go on the timeline, all you gotta do is simply go to that point and then just press the Q key. And once you press the Q key, basically this part up to this split and everything else before this right here is all going to just get deleted with one click of a button and that button happens to be Q. So once I press Q, boom, it perfectly splits everything I want it to do and that way the, the cut is phenomenal. It's exactly what I want it to be like. And then this also works the same way. Say that I had a cut on this part of the timeline right here. I made a cut at this point, but then I wanted to get rid of, uh, say, this portion right here. What I can do instead of you know pressing the X key and then you know pressing the delete button for this, what I can do instead if I click Control Z to go back, uh, what I can do is press the W key and then that gets rid of this section because it's to the right of the split. So when I press W, it just gets rid of that and it automatically snaps into place. And by the way, the snapping into place can simply be controlled by this button right here. There is a hotkey for this as well. And for me, that hotkey is N, but this button right here is very easy too. It says turn off main track magnet. So that is basically the magnetic effect that the timeline is automatically snapping into. So let's go ahead and turn that off so I can show you what I'm talking about here. So I just click that and then basically I can drag this to wherever I want on the timeline and it doesn't automatically snap back onto this clip right here. As you can see, it's kind of just hanging out. But if I leave it like this where there's a space right here and then I turn on the magnet again, as you can see, if I click right here, it automatically snaps back into place because the magnet is back on. So that's very important to understand because there's basically stock footage that I want to put into this video and we're gonna get into how the stock footage works as well. So it's gonna be really important to have this magnetic feature to be able to turn on and off because that's going to allow us to easily be able to put in that stock footage at a later point. So we've covered the basics with splitting and then editing those little splits. Now this microphone button right here, this is going to be able to record some audio for you over these tracks. Now personally, I have not used this feature yet, but this is where you will go if you want to do a voiceover for your video. But let's go ahead and add some text to this panel here. So say I wanted to add some text right here, we simply go to the text tab up here. And then I simply just go ahead and click the plus arrow on the default text and boom, it automatically puts some text on the screen and it shows up right here on the timeline. Very simple. But let's go ahead and go and double click this text box and what we need is a background. So we definitely need to go and just scroll down here and uh, find the background button. Let's go ahead and check mark that. And as you can see, it added a black background to the text which makes it a lot easier to see. And let's go ahead and adjust the size using this arrow key right here. You can use any of the corners as you can see to make the text go bigger or smaller. And you can also use this button right here to rotate the text to make it at an angle if you want to. I'm gonna keep it at zero degrees. You can see that it says zero degrees at the top of my head. As you can see, as I tilt it one way or the other, the degree mark changes as you can see that. So that's pretty important to know if you ever want to adjust your text as such. But you can go ahead and just double click your text and rename it to whatever you want. I personally am a big fan of watermelon, so I'm gonna go ahead and type camels because that makes logical sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and type camels, as you can see, and camels is going to show up on my forehead because I want to put it on my forehead as so. And uh, <laughs> dude, it's like I'm playing that one game, uh, like guess who or something, no, not guess who. It's like that one card game where you hold a card at the top of your head and do whatever, whatever that game is. That's kind of reminding me of that right now. But anyways, this is a great time to grab a water and also for you to leave a like on the video and comment down below something that you found useful on this video. That would mean a lot to me. I would really appreciate it. But guys, with that being said, we have camels here. And what we want to do with camels is actually add a sound effect. So if we want to add a sound effect, you can simply go to audio and use some of their audio. But a lot of the audio is copyrighted and I don't recommend using any of their audio. Whatever you want to use, I recommend downloading it from an external site that is copyrighted copyright free. I'm not an expert in audio, but basically the audio on here is not the best to use because it's been getting a lot of copyright strikes according to other people from what I've heard. 
So I don't recommend using any audio from here. You're more than certainly welcome to if you want, but just be aware that it could be copyrighted and it could cause further issues for you. But it's also important to note that if you want to add like just a small sound effect to me putting this text in. So what I've actually done is I've imported a one second sound effect that I got from YouTube and I just downloaded it and I simply have this sound effect because what I like to do is when I use sound effects, I like to have them when text pops up, it's great to have a pop sound effect. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like here. So as you can see, I, if I zoom in here, I lined up the, the text with the audio. So it kind of pops in at the exact same time here. So once you have that perfectly aligned, what we're gonna go ahead and do is play the clip. I'm gonna turn the audio back on here momentarily and let's go ahead and see what this sounds like. And, we, and it's not what you, so as you can see, the text popped up with the sound effect. Let's go ahead and readjust this to a point where I'm actually talking fluidly in this video because it was kind of hard to, to hear me because first of all, I was just so quiet. So in order to adjust the audio for this clip, what we wanna do is just simply left click on the clip and then go up to this audio tab right here. And once you click on audio, you'll see in the basic settings, the volume. And this is where you can adjust the volume to decrease it or increase it. In my case, if I play the audio, I think, so let's go ahead and get right. It's not that loud, actually. So what we're gonna do is click on the audio here, and we're gonna just, uh, by the way, if you see any of these little yellow frame things pop up, just go ahead and click, got it. You don't have to worry about those. Those are, those are just little tips that they're trying to help you out with. But you have me, you have me to help you out with. So yay, you don't have to worry about those. So yeah, but anyway, let's go ahead and go up to the audio tab once again and go ahead and just use this slider bar and we can just scroll that up to about six decibels or seven decibels and that should be enough audio increase for us to be able to hear us now when we talk so let's go ahead and uh, just kind of adjust this to line it up perfectly just the way we want it and let's go ahead and see if the audio is louder and let's go ahead and view the pop sound effect with the text once more i think so let's go ahead and get right into Perfect. We'd love to see that because as you can see, if we wanted to be even louder, we could just go and click on this again, go to audio, and then simply increase it more. But uh, you know, we're pretty good in that regard. But as you can see with the text, the audio lines up nicely with the actual text itself. I can actually make it a little better here if I move it just to the left there. And let's go ahead and listen to it one more time. So let's go ahead and so let's go ahead. So let's go ahead. It's perfect. It lines up great with the text. And that's what you kind of want to have with your text is an audio cue with the visual cue. It makes the, the cues combined a lot more effective than just having one or the other. So that's very important. So yeah, we've reviewed text, we've reviewed audio, we've reviewed the basic cut functions, and then undoing and redoing actions. Now one other thing that I want to show you guys is stock footage. Stock footage is super duper useful. I highly recommend using it in your videos if you have the opportunity. So for example, I have a piece of stock footage here. And what I want to do is I'm going to go to this part of my clip, and I'm going to want to insert it into this footage here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to simply go right about here and I'm gonna press X on my keyboard to make that first cut and I'm just gonna take this stock footage and drag it just on top of my clip right here and as you can see since the stock footage is on top of the regular footage that's why the stock footage is actually showing but basically what I want to have happen here is have my audio from the original clip still playing in the background as the stock footage goes over the video of the original footage. So to do this, what we wanna do is first of all, shorten this clip because it's very, very long. So instead of having to go over here and drag it all the way back to the original point, what you can do is just go to, back to the front here and simply just go to where you want it to end right here with the slider. And we're gonna end it right here. And then you're on the stock footage and then just press X and then you can press delete on this clip like so. Or what you can do is if you control Z and then control Z once again, instead of doing those two actions, you can just press the W key and do both actions in one. So if I press W, it just gets rid of it altogether. So in order to have this kind of blend with my original clip, I'm gonna go ahead and press just to the right here of the stock footage. And once I do that, I'll be able to make a cut perfectly in line with the stock footage by pressing on the regular footage here and then pressing X 
And as you can see, I have this little piece that I want the stock footage to play over. So if I simply go over to the magnetic feature that I was talking about earlier, we're gonna go ahead and uncheck that. So making sure that it does not automatically snap back in. So if I turn that off and then I press delete after I select this, uh, the regular footage here, once I press delete, as you can see, the stock footage now has a perfect home. If I just take the stock footage and click and drag, I can drop it right in to that little cubby. And basically what this does is, as I see on my timeline, it goes from the regular footage to the stock footage. But before I did that, I forgot to extract the audio from the original clip. So if I go ahead and just do control Z and control Z one more time, what I wanna do before I do that step of deleting this original footage is I want to right click and then click extract audio. And this will take the audio from my clip right here. As you can see, there's actually not much audio from the original clip, but as you can see, there is some bars there that are popping up. So there is audio showing, but then after you extract that audio, then you can delete this little section there and then you can drag in the stock footage like so. And that's really important because now you have the visual of the stock footage, but then you also have the audio of the original footage. So that way when I talk, I can be talking in the background as this stock footage plays. And that's very important. One thing you wanna do here is uh, also when you go from the regular footage to the stock footage like this, you wanna add some sort of transition to make it flow a little better. As you can see, it's like very abrupt. So if you wanna make that flow a lot better, what you can do is go to the transitions tab right here. And I love this transition right here. It's completely free. There are some pro transitions that you don't need, but the free transition mix right here, if you just click and drag that right over top, like so, you'll sometimes get this little pop-up, but it doesn't really mean anything here. So just go ahead and click okay. And then as you can see, if we just go back here, you can see the transition from the main clip to the stock footage clip. It's a lot smoother and you can always adjust it by just clicking on the transition like so. And you can always drag it like this to make it shorter or longer. So I'm just gonna keep it like about right there. And then go ahead and just do the same thing. Go ahead and click and drag from mix here and go ahead and put one on the end as well. That way you have a transition from the stock footage back to the main footage as well in a nice manner. Doing this makes a nice flow from the main footage to the stock footage and then back to the main footage. It's a very nice transition and I really do enjoy how this stuff looks. So this is kind of what it looks like without the audio because I'm not obviously talking in this audio track. So with that being said, here's what the final stock footage piece looks like. So pretend that I was talking during this little segment here, and as you can see, the stock footage goes in and out just like so. Here it is one more time. Looks very nice, very professional, and it just looks like a very well done and well put together piece. And I can do this in a very short time frame, and I wanna show you guys how quick I can actually do this here because it's actually pretty cool. So for example, in this clip right here, I'm actually talking, as you can see. The channel that I actually revived is this one. So as you can see, I'm actually talking in this clip. So I wanna show you guys how fast I can actually do this here. So I'm gonna start off by just making a cut here and let's go ahead and get to it. So let's go ahead and cut. And then I'm also gonna make a cut here and boom, just like that. We need some stock footage. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna cut the stock footage right there, get rid of it like so. And then we're gonna extract the audio like that, delete that, put that there, then go to transitions. And just like that, you have exactly what I just told you in a matter of 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and just click play. So yeah, the channel that I actually revived is this one right here. And yes, it's not actually revived. And that's how it's done. That's how you add stock footage into your pieces. And obviously what you wanna do is have stock footage that is about what you're talking about in the actual video. So if you're talking about toys, you can get some stock footage about toys and that way you can create a visual cue with the audio cue that you're combining in the video to make it that much better in your video overall. So that's how you work with stock footage. And we've gone over so much in this video already. We've done stock footage, we've done text, we've done the basic cuts, and that is pretty much everything I use with this editing software. I don't do many fancy edits or anything like that, 
basically everything I've showed you is all that I've learned with this editing software and I'm able to create such good quality videos with only these basic edits. And it's really cool because the export process is super duper easy. By the way, if you want to rename your project, just go up to the top here and you can just rename it to camels because that's the epic camels that's on my forehead right now. You can see camels is just where it's at. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment that says camels if you are interested because uh, camels are just one of a kind. So be sure to comment camels down below if you're interested. So let's go ahead and first of all go to the export if we want to export this video. And once you click export, it'll bring up this little page right here with the settings that it has going on. Now this face cam that I'm currently using for this video only runs in 30 FPS. And there's a reason why I'm using this camera. I don't have any other camera available to me right now. So I have to work with what I got but uh, I can always change the video quality to 60 FPS, which is what the rest of the video is running in anyway. So I can change it to 60. And other than that, that is all the changes I need to make. If I wanna name it camels, I can leave it like that, or I can name it something else. We can name it camel watermelon. That is definitely an upgrade. And then we would just click export right here. Now, obviously I don't need to export this file because it's not an actual completed video. So I'm not gonna click export, but that's how you would export it but I'm going to click cancel for the sake of this video. But guys, I really hope this video did help you out in some way, shape, or form. It is definitely a beginner's guide for CapCut because there is no need to have super high quality edits in a beginner's guide, but those are the basics. I hope the hotkeys really helped you out because those are the foundation for this editing software. So be sure you have those correctly in place and you can always mess around with the hotkeys to play around with what you actually like because everybody's different and everybody likes certain hotkeys a certain way. So you can always adjust those at any point in time. But once again, I really hope this video did help you out. If you did find it useful, be sure to drop a like Go ahead and leave a comment down below and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. It really does mean a lot to me. With that being said, guys, I will see you in future videos. But for now, take care and peace.